the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Through him all things were made. Without nothing was made that has been made. He is the word. John 1, verse 1, 2, 3. Verse 1, 2, 3. That's the one. Verse 1, 2, 3 Verse 1, 2, 3 In the beginning was the Word And the Word was with God And the Word was God He was with God In the beginning Through Him all things were made Without nothing was made That has been Hello, youth and kids. My name is Melissa, and today I will be telling you more about how the Bible came to be. We are going to be looking at the Bible, not the stories that's found in the Bible, but the Bible itself. The Bible didn't always look like this, all laid the bound and ready for us to go. Actually, the Bible started out 3,000 years ago with Moses, who wrote the first five books of the Bible. Now, yes and kids, can you take a guess how the first form of the Bible might have looked like? Can you close your eyes for one second? Are they closed? Are they really closed? Anyone peeking? Well, you'll some kids. The first Bible actually looked like something like this, a stone tablet. And Moses writes about it in Exodus 31 verse 18, where he talks about how God gave him the Ten Commandments. Now, bear in mind, you'll some kids, that God gave him two tablets, but I'm not strong enough to hold both of them. Now, this is what it says in Exodus 31 verse 18. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by God's finger. So I guess you can say, you'll think it's God actually was the first author of the Bible. Now, can you imagine how his handwriting must have looked like? Now, the rest of the, I'm just putting this down, you'll think it's because it's very heavy. Now, Moses wrote the five, first five books of the Bible. He wrote about creation. He wrote about Adam and Eve. He wrote about Noah and the flood. He wrote about Abram. And he wrote about the Israelite people. Now, you'll think it's, these stories that Moses wrote down were told from generation to generation. And as it was being told from one generation to the next, they started to write it down on scrolls. So the second form, how the Bible looked, was actually a scroll. And it was called the Scriptures or the Book of the Law. Now, after Moses passed away, a series of kings started to lead the Israelite people. But they were not following the word of God and did not obey the laws that he gave them to live by. That all changed when a new king came to be, and his name was King Uzziah. Now, a fun fact about King Uzziah is that he was only eight years old when he became king. Can you believe it, being eight years old and then becoming a king? Now, Yilson kids, he knew the value of God's word, and he was deeply saddened that his people did not live by the scriptures or the book of law that God gave them to live by. That all changed when he found the scrolls, and he started to implement that in the way of living again. In 2 Kings 23 verse 25, it says, There was no king to compare with Uzziah, neither, neither before nor after a king who turned in total and repentant obedience to God, heart and mind and strength, following the instructions revealed to and written by Moses. Yilson Ketz, after King Uzziah introduced the covenant of law again to his people, they start to live by it again. Now the rest of the Old Testament consists out of um, people talking about Joshua, Moses' successor. It also speaks about the Israelite people again. It speaks about the kings, the judges, and the prophets. Then we go to the New Testament. Can you remember what the first four books of the Bible are called, Yilson Kids? They are called the Gospels. And can you remember who wrote them? It was Matthew, John, Mark, and Luke. And they wrote about Jesus' lives and his teaching. 
most of the New Testament actually consists out of letters that were written by the Apostle Paul. Now, these letters were used to send out to the early churches, and it was used to encourage them, it was used to guide them, and it was used to teach them how to live according to the example that Jesus has set out for us to live by. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, Every part of Scripture is god brief and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the Word, we are put together and shaped up for the task that God has for us. Now, Yilson kids, I love my Bible, and I'm very, very thankful that I don't have to carry a stone tablet to church every week. I don't know about you, but I'm very thankful for that. I love reading my Bible, and I love spending time with God. If you look inside my Bible, you will see these passages that's highlighted, and I've made like written notes, because every time I spend with God in the Word, He shows me something new, and I learn something new. But we are very lucky that we have a Bible that looks like this, but now we also can have the Bibles on our phones and we can also have it on a tablet other than a stone tablet where we could use it to send an encouraging message to someone. I'm actually going to go to my Bible app right here and I'm going to pick a verse. I think I'm going to pick Joshua 1 verse 9 which says, Be strong and courageous. I'm going to send a friend an encouraging Bible verse because I know that they are going through a hard time. And the message is sent. That's how the Bible has evolved, girls and kids. It went from a stone tablet to us being able to use it digitally to encourage someone. Girls and kids, I believe God's word is true. And that is our big point for today. Girls and kids, do you have your stone tablets out with you? I'm just kidding. But do you have your notebook and pen ready and your Bible so that we can look at some scriptures together? Today we're going to look at five objects that the Bible compares itself to. Are you ready? The first object is the Bible compares itself to a sword. This is what it says in Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul, spirit, joints, marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. God's word is alive for us today. It has the power to cut through our innermost thoughts and feelings. Heels and kids, the word of God is like a sword that can cut through our negative thinking. It can cut through anything that's in our lives that should not be there. It's useful as a sword. The second object that it uses, that it compares itself, is that of a mirror. And you might be wondering, why a mirror? I'm going to tell you, Heels and kids. It says in James 1, verse 23 to 25, the following. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks in the mirror but forgets how he looks. Immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it will be blessed by what he does. Now you might still be confused and thinking, why does the Bible compare itself to a mirror? Well, you think it, if you look in the mirror, you see yourself, right? And you remember what you look like? It's exactly the same with the Bible. When you are reading the Bible and you're just reading it and you're not remembering what it says, it's as if you're looking in the mirror and forgetting what you look like. The Bible can be seen as a mirror. It will show you the reflection of who you are and who God made you out to be. It will also show you what you need to work on to become more like Jesus. The second object is a mirror. Heels and kids, the third object that the Bible compares itself to is that of bread. When Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, the devil came to tempt him. Near the end of it, Jesus was very hungry because he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil came and he tempted Jesus by saying, If you are really the Son of God, you will pick up a rock and turn it into bread. But Jesus, who knew the scripture, and he was actually quoting from Deuteronomy, but I'm going to read a verse out of Matthew 4, verse 4, which says, Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out from the word of God, from the mouth of God. Yilson Ketch, Jesus was able to not listen to the temptation of the of the devil because he knew the word of God. He was able to recite it and combat any scheme that the devil might have. 
Yields and kids, the Bible is spiritual food. Just like we need physical food to eat, we actually need spiritual food as well. When we read our Bible, it grows us and it actually feeds our spirit and its sustenance to our soul. It guides us to grow into who God made us to be. So we don't just need physical food, we also need spiritual food. Yields and kids, the next object that the Bible compares itself to is that of a lamb. It says in Psalm 119 verse 105, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light to my path. Now I love that, Yilson kids. God's word, this is his word, let's put the lamp on it. It will light up where you need to go. It will direct you to your next steps. And it will also light up areas in your life where you need to still work on and get better at. God's word is a lamp to our feet that we can use to take our next step and guide our every process that we make, every decision that we make. The next one, Hills and Kids, that the Bible compares itself to is that of seed. Can you remember when we spoke about the parable of the seeds? Can you tell me a bit about it, what happened in that story? It's about the farmer who goes into a field to go sow some seeds. As he's walking, some of the seed fell onto the ground and it got trampled on. Some of the seeds got eaten by the birds. Some of it flew, flew, flew onto cracks, but nothing came from it because the seed didn't get enough moisture. But the seed that fell onto the good soil yielded a harvest. It says in Luke 8 verse 15, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by preserving, produces a good crop. Yields and kids, God's word is alive. God's word is active. God's word is useful. And it's there for us to grow. It's there for us to help us. And it's there for us to fall in love with God even more. Can you remember the five objects? There's the sword of the spirit who can cut through any area of our lives, cut out the areas of our lives that we need to work on. There's the mirror. God's word is like a mirror. We need to reflect what it says in the Bible and live it out. We need to see the Bible as spiritual food so that we can grow in our relationship with God. We must see the Bible as a light that will light and guide our every single step. And we should see it as seed where if you are planted in the word, you will flourish in the house of God. Are you ready to take up a love for the word of God, Hills and Gates? Can you say the big point out loud with me? I believe the word of God is true. Hills and Kids, why don't you stand up and we'll pray together. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that every word that is written down is still relevant to us today, Father God. Father, we ask that you would ignite a love for your word and help us to grow in our reading the scriptures and living by it, Father God. We pray this and ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hidden
Yes, and kids, one of my favorite things in life is my relationship with God. Maybe you have not yet made that decision to invite Him to become your Lord and Savior. Well, I'm going to give you that opportunity today. If you want to give your life to Him, why don't you stand up and put your hand over your heart and together we're going to pray a special prayer asking, inviting God into your life. Are you ready? Let's close our eyes. Dear Lord Jesus, today I ask you to come into my life and be my best friend. Forgive me of all the things I've done wrong. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sins. Help me to love you and live for you every day because of Jesus Today, I am a Christian. Amen. Amen.